Hey everyone, what's up? This is Walter Fate, and I'm here today to do something different. Gonna be less editing today, but I'm here to bring you some horrible fiction. This isn't fan fiction, but it might as well be. Note, if you've been here a really long time, you might remember that I've read this before. But my videos sucked a lot more back then, and I didn't read much of it. Let's finish it this time. This was posted to the Something Awful forums in August of 2009 with the following introduction. I'd like to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, the masterwork of a former peer of mine. During his senior year, he managed to knock the socks off our entire creative writing class with The Lightning. Using influences from other artistic masterpieces such as Dragon Ball Z, Iron Man, and Spider-Man, he managed to craft one of the most epic science fiction short stories of our time. Without further delay, I present to you The Lightning. Chapter 1. Life on Mars In the year 2937, Earth was no longer a planet in our galaxy. Earth was destroyed due to too much pollution, and the Earth's core became too hot, therefore causing the planet to explode. Scientists were right about global warming. It was something that people should have been worried about. During this rough time on Earth, many giant rockets were made by NASA to get the people of Earth onto Earth's brother planet Mars for a new way of life. It is now the year 2983, and every human being has told this story in their history class at school at a very young age. My parents told me this story when I was a young boy. I am Luke Bolt, by the way. I have just finished my first day as a freshman in high school. I am very tall, I have short brown hair, green eyes, and I am often seen wearing an orange shirt with blue jeans. I can't help but think about my origins as a human being as I am walking out of the school from a completed first day as a freshman. Being that this is the beginning of a new phase in my life, I can't help but to think about how other people got to this planet, starting a new phase in everyone's life at that time. I have been told that people once used automobiles, but on Mars, we just use jetpacks since they are easy to use, you don't have to worry about car accidents or building highways or any of those things. Just grab your jetpack, put it on, and go to your destination. One flaw that we have on our new planet, however, is that people are constantly being warned about how much more dangerous electricity and lightning is on Mars. On Earth, you would get hurt. Sometimes you would be in more pain than others. On Mars, you get zapped by lightning, you're dead. For me, it is a different result. A rather striking result, really. My everyday life is about to center around electricity and lightning. I become something that has never been done in the history of human beings before. But not quite yet in my life. It had an impact in my life later on this very day. It all started with one of my friends screaming. Okay, that's actually the end of the first chapter. Yeah, these are some pretty short chapters. So the Earth explodes due to pollution, causing the story to take place on Mars almost a thousand years in the future. Remember that that's the setting, because the author doesn't do a very good job of remembering it. You're probably asking me, Walter, is this guy's name really just Luke Bolt? Like, before he gets his electrical powers, that just happens to be his name? Yes. I also like how jetpacks mean you don't have to worry about car accidents. Like, people weren't crashing their horses into each other before we had cars. However, this second chapter is going to get a little violent. Spoilers. Chapter 2, Attack of the Bully. Luke, Luke, you have to come with me right now. I asked, what's the problem, Brandon? It's Jacob Sanzek and John Kimberson, two important friends of mine from school. They're getting beat up by that school bully, Mike Stike. Hurry, you must come with me right now. At this point, Brandon was almost dragging me by the arm to go see this violent scene in action. By the time Brandon and I got there by running, Mike Stike had beaten up both Jacob and John. They were both lying on the ground unconscious, with many bruises and blood running down their chins. This giant monster of a kid known as Mike Stike turned around and saw both Brandon and I standing there in shock as he looked like he was ready to beat up another student. Life on Mars had always been this violent, and the bullies have always been this aggressive. Well, well, if it isn't more freshmen ready to once again get a good old kick in the butt from the big Mikey Stikey boy. He said as he started to get into a fighting stance, getting ready for battle once again. He was a big and muscular kid. He had a black shirt with a giant white skull in the middle of it, and he had black metal wristbands with huge white spikes coming out everywhere on the little things. Brandon began to yell, You have hurt both my friends, and now I will make sure you will suffer for it. He started to run toward Mike, about to throw a punch to his face. Mike caught the punch with his left hand and jabbed Brandon in the stomach with his right hand, knocking Brandon unconscious like Jacob and John on the ground. It was up to me now. As I was about to run away from the scene of the crime, Mike yelled at me, Okay, man, you're next. As he began walking toward me, cracking his knuckles, once again ready to fight. I threw as many punches and kicks as I could at the guy, all in which either did nothing or they were blocked. 
Like my three fallen friends, he knocked me unconscious as well. But before everything started to get dark on me, I saw the principal running toward Mike Stike with several police officers. My friends and I woke up in the school nurse's office with several bandages and small casts on our knees and elbows. We seemed to be able to get up okay. The nurse then noticed that we were moving around alright and allowed us to leave her office. End of chapter. Yeah, if you thought the narration was bad, there is no way you were ready for the dialogue. Mike Stike is a giant bully who wears a skull t-shirt and spiked bracelets. I have never seen a bigger bully stereotype in my life. Part of this makes me think this guy's never actually seen a bully, but part of me thinks that's also hard to believe. By the way, this is what it looks like when someone is covered in bruises and has blood running down their chin. And this is what it looks like to throw as many punches and kicks as you can. Fucking hell, what lazy writing. These fights don't really get any better either. Also, I'm a bit of a writing nerd, but it bothered the hell out of me when he said something in parentheses in the middle of a line of dialogue. Why would you ever think that was okay? By the way, anyone else notice that the hero of this story just tried to run away and leave his friends? We have some more time. Let's read on. Chapter 3. The Lightning is Born I started to walk out of the school again to go get my jetpack on the jetpack parking station to leave. But all of a sudden, I heard something from the entrance doors. Hey, punk, I'm not through with you yet. It was Mike Stike, ready to fight me again. He came charging toward me with a flying sidekick. He kicked me so hard that my body hit a nearby green power vault to the school's electricity. The machine was shocking and hurting me, but after it did, I felt a million times better than I ever did before. I felt a power in my body that I couldn't even explain in words. My hair began to spike up, my eyes became a pure white color, and my muscle mass was incredible. I ran toward Mike Stike with all my might, punched him as hard as I possibly could. He immediately fell over like a pile of bricks on the red sand of Mars, with blood streaming down to his chin. He was in some real pain. My body instantly turned back to normal again. I had no idea how I had such short-term incredible strength and speed. Two of his friends came out from the entrance stores yelling, Mike! Mike! Are you okay? What did you do to him, kid? Why would you hurt him like this? My only response to the two kids was, he deserved it. At this point, the kids helped Mike go to the school nurse. When I got home, my mother yelled, Luke, are you okay? The school nurse called me earlier, saying that you got hurt by another student. Are you sure you're okay, honey? Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine, mom, but I just had a feeling in my body during the fight that I never felt in my whole life, I told her. You were probably just nervous, honey. I would be too. Now we are going to go see your principal and make sure that this kid receives the punishment he truly deserves. My mother and I put our jetpacks on and went to the high school to go see the principal to take care of Mike Stike. I am sure you're aware by now, but this is what this new form probably looks like. This is getting sad. This guy just described the same power vaults that schools have now. God, technology really doesn't get too far in the next thousand years, does it? In the same vein, it's hard not to go off about space because I fucking love space, but this is such a waste of a setting. He finally brought up the red sand of Mars. Barely. He hasn't made this clear, but it seems that Mars has been terraformed, considering that they're outside. God damn it, man, that is such an interesting thing that you've just neglected to even mention in the story. We haven't even seen a cell phone yet. Jetpacks are basically the only technology we've seen three chapters in. Why is this happening in the future? Why is this happening on Mars? And why is this bully not in prison if he goes around literally knocking people unconscious all day? Also, that was one hell of an Ivan Drago moment when he said he deserved it. We'll actually get an even better one later on, so be ready for that. Next chapter's short, so I'll just read that one, talk about it, and then call it a day. I have another video to work on. Chapter 4, Discovering This Amazing Power I didn't go to school the next day because of my injuries, but I was able to convince my mom to take me to a professional doctor to see what was going on with me when I had that incredible and powerful form. After a series of tests with Dr. Zebedila, a doctor who specializes in lightning activity on Mars, confirmed that I had a very rare body form known as the lightning form. I am the first person in history to actually have this power. The doctor said that by forcing my elbows down or getting very angry, I will turn into this powerful lightning form. This was caused by getting hit by that green power vault to the school. We went to a testing room where the doc and I found out that I have super strength, lightning fast speed, and the ability to shoot small electric lightning bolts out of my hands and eyes, and even had the ability to fly after doing a big jump into the air. But Dr. Zebedila warned me to be careful with these new powers, and only use them for the good of mankind. Forcing his elbows down is kind of a weird thing to say, but he probably means something like this. 
You know when your kid gets beat up in school and you decide to take him to a doctor who specializes in lightning activity? I like how the lightning form has never been observed before, but it already had a name for some reason. At least the way it was written. It reminds me of Homer Simpson being diagnosed with Homer Simpsonism, and he's all like, Dear God, why me? Anyway, that's about all I have to say about that chapter, but I'm definitely not done with the story. There's quite a bit more of it, and it just gets worse and worse. The fighting is obviously all based on DBZ, but the events seem kind of loosely based on Spider-Man, just worse in every way. You'll notice that since the main character is a self-insert, he's not going to have a secret identity, because that would involve not being worshipped by everyone all the time. But we'll get to that later. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks to all my subscribers, and if you're new here and enjoy the content, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing for more of the same. Big thanks also to my generous patrons. I will be shouting all of them out next time I make a video I think a lot of people are going to watch. Probably tonight. YouTube demonetized every one of my videos, so Patreon's a pretty big help right now. I probably shouldn't equip my job to YouTube in the first place, huh? Anyway, thanks to the author and the original poster, and the guy on DeviantArt who's the only way I found a link to the story. Have a great day, everyone, and don't get hit by lightning next time you're on Mars.